All right, what's going on guys? And I've got Manny Ortiz here. I ran into him at Imaging USA and we went out for a little shoot. He had this Canon R3 and I had the Nikon Z9. Now on his channel, we actually went over everything for photos, so check it out because we had Diana out here and we did a bunch of photo shoots between them. He took some awesome stuff with both of these cameras. Both of us were kind of switching off between them. So head to his channel, check that one out. And then we're gonna get into some video specs on some of these to kind of find out some of the differences between them. This is not like the full review or anything. We'll do some more videos like this. This is like really our first hands-on with both of these cameras. So some first impressions with it and we'll see how it went. So let's talk a little bit about the ergonomics of these cameras here. I know it doesn't have quite as much impact for video because you might be using this on a gimbal or a tripod or anything like that, but we didn't have any of that here, so we were kind of handheld. That's definitely a much lighter camera though, right? I mean. Compared body to body, yeah. Yeah. It's like, it's like it feels hollow. Yeah. It feels like there's nothing in there. So whatever Canon did to really hollow that out or just drop the weight. I have the 1DX Mark III and there's no comparison weight wise between those, those two cameras. It's like insane. This is basically lighter than taking like an R5, putting a grip on it, A1, putting a grip on it. No shutter at all on the Nikon. Both of them have like that shutter closing, but this one actually doesn't have a shutter at all. I know some people will appreciate that because you can't get like, if dust gets in here, this is not the actual shutter mechanism that is. So it could get some issues in there, but you know, for video, not that big of a deal on there. We do have a big difference with the screen though. So flip screen on that. And I think both of us would prefer that for video for sure. It just all depends. It just all, like I, I'll put it to the side. Sometimes it's convenient. Yeah. But like I said, like a lot of handheld stuff, I shoot with the A1. Yeah. I reach my A1 instead of my FX3 and my A7S3 because I want, I want to just do it. I want it just to flip up. You know, I don't yeah. want it to look. I don't want to look over here. I just want to look here. And sometimes cages can also get in the way of the hinge and yeah. the HDMI cord and all that. So sometimes I prefer that for video. So it just depends. Nikon's got a little bit more creative with this. It kind of comes out to the side right here, but yeah, there's no way of going up with it at all. I'd say the other big one is gonna be in our cards. This one uses CF Express, which is really nice. And then I, yeah, I can't even it's get so, it it's, open. It's really hard. It is so hard to get this door open. This is actually CF Express in both card slots. And that one's CF Express and SD. So it kind of gives you both options, which is I, I think when we were talking on your channel, really nice for flexibility. For video though, a CF Express for both kind of means that you can shoot all different formats on both cards simultaneously. So, so I'll tell you one thing. So I was shooting with, uh, so I was shooting with the Nikon Z9. I was shooting shots, uh, some B-roll shots of Dan. I was shooting a 4K 120, and the camera I would say locked up on me about three times. Yeah. The 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 green light would stay on, and the image would freeze. Normally, this is when YouTubers jump on that clickbait. Oh my my Z9 locked up, you know. The truth is, I'm not judging the camera based on that. This is a very early firmware, and all I can say, I, I, all I have is great things to say so far about this camera and the video options, et cetera, et cetera, but I, did, I do want to mention that. It was locking up on me. It's something that I noticed, but I'm sure it's going to be fixed. Okay, everybody pretty much knows that Canon does autofocus really well. Mm -hmm. It does a great job locking, and it's one of the smoother systems that I've ever seen. Like, it just is really nice how it just gradually moves with your subject. The Nikon, this is definitely by far the best, like, of Nikon cameras. Oh. Yeah, compared to, like, your Z6.2s and Z7s and things it's like even, that. It's not even close. One thing I will say, though, you notice this especially, mm -hmm. it's a little jumpy sometimes. Yep, I tap Diana's face on the screen. I tap behind her, maybe, like, close, closely behind her. I would say over here, the white box would still be on her face, but then it, it, it's just, like, it wouldn't follow. So I tap yeah. on the background. Okay, go on the background, but the white box is still on her face, but I tap on her, and then it would... It, it wouldn't find it right away. It would just, it'd be a little, a little fidgety. You know, we're talking like little, intri like little details. Like I was looking, right? I was looking to make the cam, like try to trick the camera. And yeah. I don't even think it will be noticed that much. And it was 
locking eyes far it's, away. It's the number one eye locker. Yeah. Okay. I just made the term up. It's the number one <laughs> eye locker. This thing locks eyes insanely fast, I, I faster than any one of any of these other cameras. Mm -hmm. Like the moment, the moment it, you're at the corners. Yeah. Right. Get your eye right away. Yeah. Give me any one of these. I'll be yeah, like, absolutely. It's, we're, we're at that point. All right, guys. So I am back in the studio now, and I've had a chance to really go over the video that we shot out there, do a few more tests between these two cameras on my own here in the studio. So I'm going to share that with you. What's interesting is when Manny and I were shooting this, it was basically just our first hands on with these two cameras. We really hadn't had any direction of what we were going to do with this. And that intro sequence, we just had so much awesome footage that I really wanted to put something really cool together. And it ended up being so representative of what was actually going on. So here you you have Diana who was modeling for us and the snow was beautiful and Sally was out there doing a shoot and they were having some fun with that and then here you have Manny and I inside nerding out of these cameras comparing specs really trying to fight it out and see which one is going to be the better camera and ended up coming together really nicely with these but I do have a lot more information on these cameras to share with you. So let's take a look. So going back to that autofocus test, what was actually interesting is that the Nikon Z9 was actually picking up the eye even earlier than the R3 and quite a bit more. In fact, there were a few times that Diana was actually walking towards us that the R3 struggled to pick her up at first. And it wasn't until a little bit later that it started locking on, whereas the Nikon Z9 locked on very well. What was a little bit more of a struggle for the Z9 is going point to point, especially in low contrast areas areas, it would kind of seem like it was hunting just a little bit before making that switch. And it might be able to be fine tuned. I did mess with it a little bit in the field while we were working this out. However, it just seemed to struggle a little bit more than the Canon. Didn't really end up being in my footage unless you're really doing like a rack focus with autofocus, which is not something I do too often. So for our test and at least what we shot, the Nikon Z9 seemed to lock on a little bit more and hold focus a little bit longer. So digging into the quality, the first test I had to do was 8K. If you can actually tell the difference between 8K and maybe 4K24 from the Canon R3, and the answer is yes, you can. It's kind of hard to spot at 100%, but definitely at 200%, you can see the difference. So if you're doing something like cropping and post, which is what I would do more often, I'm not usually natively shooting 8K on an 8K timeline, but for that cropping and post, you can see a bit of a difference between having this 8K option on the Nikon Z9. Also, when it comes to 4K 120, a lot different with that one. So the Canon R3 actually has a weakness in there. It, it only shoots in that mode already slowed down, you end up with a 30 frame per second file. There's no audio in the file, the clip is already slowed down in it. Plus it is only shot at all eyes. So you're actually ending up with like gigs and just for a minute, I think it was like six gigs of recording. So it was insane file sizes when you're using that. By comparison, the Nikon Z9 shoots 120 frames per second, just like any other frame rate. So you still have full audio, you have a native 120 frame per second file, you have the full bit rate options. So you can kind of choose what works best for you. So for me, as someone who does use 4K 120 all the time, this was a big win for the Nikon Z9. So if you're a 4K 120 shooter, definitely this is going to be the camera that has the most going for it. The Z9 also has the ability to shoot ProRes in camera. I don't personally use that and probably wouldn't all that often, but I know some of you guys love ProRes. It's very easy to edit. Uh, and so it's a great to have that in camera. Now what the Canon R3 does have is internal raw recording, whereas the Nikon you have to go output into an external recorder like the Ninja 5 Plus and it's an option, it's definitely available on it, but internally it's not available. So I have seen a few videos also that are pointing to better dynamic range on the Canon R3. So if you're somebody who is shooting log, this might be an advantage to you, the Canon R3, or being able to shoot raw with plenty of dynamic range. Now, if you're not a raw shooter, come back to the Nikon Z9 for a minute because Nikon has this flat image profile. It's not log, but it is just a joy to shoot with. It is so easy to grade, so easy to work with. Autofocus still works well. And it is my favorite profile in any of these cameras by far. Probably any camera right now that I've used is this Nikon uh, flat profile. They've had it in the Z6 II. They have it in the Z9 as well. I absolutely love shooting with it. Plus, if you're not shooting log, do keep in mind that the Canon is actually only an 8-bit file. You have to actually go into log or like the HDR modes 
in order to be able to lock down that 10-bit profile. Whereas a Nikon Z9 can shoot full 10-bit 422 in any of these modes and picture profile standard, it doesn't matter. So for somebody who is not a log or a raw profile user, the Z9 actually has a few advantages to it, but if you're after the most dynamic range, shooting log, shooting raw, that's where the Canon R3 has a few advantages. Now I also did a low light test with both of these cameras and I will say the R3 definitely the winner here no matter how you run it. Basically I started out with log and in that log mode you could definitely see that the R3 was the better all the way through. However, what's interesting is the Nikon Z9 pretty much unusable above 6400 or at definitely 12,800 ISO. Whereas the R3 could probably pump another one or two stops more. It was still going pretty strong at that level. Now going into the standard profile again, the R3 is the better camera in low light. It was definitely performing up to higher ISOs. However, the built-in noise reduction, both of these were set to standard. The built-in noise reduction on the R3, way too strong, way too strong. You will definitely need to turn this down. You'll get much better results when you do that. However, still across the board, the R3 was going to be the better camera in low light, again, probably due to the lower resolution megapixels, and that's usually an advantage when it comes to video mode. Now, I do have two more really awesome shoots. I'm talking like supercars coming up this week with the Nikon Z9. I'll probably bring out the R3 as well for some more stuff. If you haven't checked it out yet, definitely subscribe. Check me out on Instagram. I'm gonna do some behind the scenes of all of that stuff. Definitely appreciate Manny and Diana helping me out with these shoots. Definitely go check out their channel so you can, I'm sure you're already subscribed, but Manny's got some really awesome stuff out there. So definitely go check that out. Plus he's going over the photo aspects of these cameras a bit more in detail. Hope you guys are doing amazing. Stay tuned, some really cool Nikon Z9 content coming your way soon.